Welcome everyone. My name is Abu Bakar Ibrahim, and I am excited to have all of you joining us for our monthly webinar. We got a pack of agenda today with expert joining us. The organizers of our Abuja's users, one, Adirin Tobul Kisu, our, co our founder and co-organizer, Ademut Ladi, co-organizer, Balogun Steven, co-organizer, Obani Fidelis Ademola, co-organizer, and my humble self, Abu Bakar Ibrahim. Our speaker today in person of Indrajat Patil. Please permit me, Patil, if I don't pronounce her first name well. <laughs> Um, Till is a software engineer. It's a software engineer at ESQ Lab. He has a PhD in cognitive neuroscience and specialized in investigating the psychological and neural basis of more moral judgment and decision making. He's also an active R package developer and part of I'm part of Easy Start team. Currently, he works on open source software for system pharmacology. Um, with, so without further ado, I would like to, I would like to move, hand over everything to Mr. Indraja Patel. Over to you, sir. Hey everyone, um, good morning. Um, thanks Aubak for that uh, nice introduction and thanks to Bill Kisu for inviting me to give this talk. Um, so I will just share my screen. Um, hopefully that works. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so today I want to talk about um, a package uh, that I have been developing maybe for the last two years for GG Cells Plot. Um, and I'll be giving you uh, an introductory tutorial uh, on this. Um, for, and the current version, which is on CRAN, is 0 .0, uh, 0.9. So, Here's the plan uh, about how I want to go about this. Uh, first, I would like to talk about why this package, its primary functions, how customizable this is, what are its benefits, what are the misconceptions about it, what are its limitations. So why this package? Um, so given that currently there are over 17,000 R packages, uh, there has to be a good reason why someone develops a new package. and. For me, uh, the short answer for this is that uh, GStat plot is a package uh, that is designed to give you uh, information rich plots with uh, a lot of uh, important statistical details. And it's also suitable for faster um, exploratory data analysis. And it can be used uh, to provide visualizations in uh, scholarly publications. The quickest way to read the philosophy uh, about this uh, package is to read this publication associated with it um, and it should take about 10 minutes. Now, typically a data analysis workflow uh, looks something like this. Uh, you import the data, you tidy it up, then you transform it uh, into a form uh, in which you can visualize it. Once you visualize it, uh, you can figure out what's the right model for it. Um, but that might suggest a different kinds of visualization and then you transform the data and then you visualize again, etc. cetera. Um, so the central idea of GG, GG stats plot is quite simple. Uh, it's to combine this modeling and uh, visualization phase into a single uh, step, which kind of speeds up your exploratory uh, data analysis workflow. Um, it, it goes without saying that information rich graphic uh, is worth a thousand words. Um, so for example, here looking at uh, a simulation of data set which has the same mean uh, on X and Y, same standard deviation and same correlation, but the underlying uh, distribution of the data looks quite different. 
So graphical summaries can reveal problems that are usually not visible uh, just, for, just by looking at numerical statistics. So it's really important that you visualize the data and not just um, rely on the numerical statistics. Another uh, advantage is that if we have ready-made plots like the one Stigis plot, a stats plot provides you, you require, it requires no further customization. So the grammar of graphics uh, is a really powerful framework and it can help you prepare any kind of graphic uh, that you want. But um, this usually comes with a lot of customization because you have to build these plots yourself. And if the effort needed to prepare a plot like this um, is significant, um, over time you can develop a habit where you are less likely to graphically explore the data just because you don't want to invest all the time that is needed in preparing this uh, custom plots. And there are a lot of other benefits, uh, but we'll come back to them uh, after looking at what the plots actually look like. And that will give you a better idea of, um, um, of why this is important. So first you can uh, install the package uh, from CRAN, um, or you can also get the development version of this package from GitHub um, and load the needed packages. Of course, uh, ggstatsplot relies on ggplot2, so it, that's also needed. So we'll look at the primary functions uh, in this package, and we'll look at them based on the research hypothesis uh, that we have in mind. So the first hypothesis quite common is hypothesis about group differences. So the first function we'll look at is GG between stats, and this is for between group comparisons. Um, the function call looks like the following. It's quite simple. Uh, you give it data, you give it uh, X, which is your grouping variable, and Y, which is the uh, quantitative variable. Um, and the plot looks like this. This is the default plot that comes uh, just out of this uh, default call. Um, and as you can look, uh, as you can see, um, the defaults return quite a lot of details. Uh, it gives you raw data and the distribution of the data. Uh, it gives you descriptive statistics, which are plotted here as mean. Uh, you can see that the inferential statistics is included in the subtitle of the plot. Uh, this also includes effect size estimation and the uncertainty related uh, with these estimates. It includes pairwise comparisons, um, and it also includes in caption uh, Bayesian hypothesis testing and Bayesian estimation. So just in a single call, you, you have this rich uh, visualization and also rich uh, statistical information that is available to you. Um, and the function, of course, internally decides whether to carry out a t-test um, if two groups are present or whether to carry out an ANOVA if more than two groups are present. Um, you can change um, two important things here to note. Uh, I'm changing here now the type of statistics which I want. Uh, before, we saw that the statistics was parametric. And here, I'm changing it to non-parametric. And we can also change the pairwise comparisons that we can look at. So here, before only significant pairwise comparison tests were being plotted, now I have changed it to uh, just show non-significant ones. So as you can see, because we changed it to non-parametric, now the test has changed to crustal walls, right? And all the other details are just accordingly. So the effect size uh, has also changed um, and, uh, and also the pairwise comparison uh, test has now changed to Dunn's test. So you can change the type of test to one of these four options, which is uh, parametric, non-parametric, robust, or Bayesian. And this is, this is going to be the case for all the functions which are in this package. You have access to to only significant, uh, only significant, only non-significant, or just show all pairwise comparisons. You can also show, uh, use this function to tag outliers. Uh, this requires uh, you to specify outlier tagging equal to true. And additionally, you can also specify which outlier, uh, which column in the data frame I want to use to label these outliers. 
Um, so for example, in this uh, example, we have uh, a movie still set and we have genres of the movie and IMDb ratings for these movies. And what we are interested in stacking points uh, which have um, outlier values um, in, in terms of their IMDb ratings. So which are the best ones and which are the worst ones. And as we can see, we have tagged them by the title of the movie. Um, additionally, you can also change the centrality measures. Uh, usually this is decided by what type you have specified. So for example, here we have specified type is equal to robust. And for robust, the centrality measure is a trimmed mean. And that's what you see here. We can also, uh, also the centrality measure kind of adapts to the type of statistics you have chosen. Um, now, not all of your group uh, related hypotheses are going to be for between subjects design. Sometimes you also tend to have within subjects design. Uh, and so for this, the package provides GG within stats uh, function. So the function call looks pretty much identical to GG between stats. Um, you just give it data X and Y, and the defaults will return all the details which were previously uh, available also in GG between stats. Um, the only difference here is, in, is that in the plot, uh, the, the centrality measure points are connected just to show that this data is, uh, is repeated measures. Additionally, sometimes we're not interested in looking at the group differences, but just looking at the distribution of a single group uh, numeric variable. So for this, the package provides a GG histostats function to create a, a histogram. So the function call looks like this. You give it data and you give it uh, X value. And if you're interested in uh, inferential statistics, you can also give a test value to check against. So here we're testing if the, if the distribution mean is different than the test value, which is here 30. Um, once again, the defaults return quite rich amount of statistical details. We get counts and proportions uh, for bins. Um, we get descriptive statistics. We get inferential statistics, again, displayed in the, in the subtitle. We get effect size and effect size estimation and the uncertainty surrounding it, as shown by Hedges G uh, in the subtitle. We get Bayesian hypothesis testing and Bayesian estimation details in the, in the caption. So this is quite similar to the, the output that we got uh, also for other functions, GG between stats and GG within stats. Uh, and once again, you can change the centrality measure to um, in your practice. If you, sometimes we, we have labeled uh, data, and in this case, we can use the GG dot plot stats function. So here, for example, I'm interested to see if the budget for a movie changes depending on the genre of the movie. Um, so here the data is labeled uh, by genre and we want to look at the distribution of budget. Um, and, as you, and we can also test if the, if the mean budget here is different from the hypothesized value, which is let's say here $30 million or something. Um, and again, the, the details always remain the same. Um, so descriptive statistics, inferential, et cetera. And you can always change the type of the, of the, uh, of the analysis uh, from parametric to non-parametric or robust. The next common kind of hypothesis we tend to have is a hypothesis about correlation analysis. Uh, and for this, the, uh, the package provides GG scatter stats function, which is to see the association between two numeric variables. And the function call looks like this. Uh, you give uh, the data frame and then you give X and Y variables. And the plot, the default plot looks something like this. Um, so the defaults return um, joint distribution, uh, marginal distributions for each variable. We get inferential statistics. Again, in the subtitle, we get effect size estimates and uh, uncertainty. And once again, in caption, we have uh, Bayesian uh, hypothesis testing and estimation related details. Uh, we can also use this function to conditionally tag certain points. Um, so for example, if I wanted to figure out um, 
what this particular point is, I can tag it giving, uh, giving certain condition. So here the condition is that I want to see a movie which has budget of over $150 million uh, and which has IMDb rating over um, 7.5. And then I want to tag uh, this variable by the title of the movie. So the title is the column in this data frame. And as you can see, it tags it um, accordingly. So this can be pretty helpful um, to figure out, for example, participants which are performing um, in a weird way or some uh, outlier data point. Uh, but sometimes we also have multiple numeric variables. The package provides GG format function, correlation matrix. Um, and so here you just need to give uh, it a data frame and it will just extract uh, all the numeric columns uh, and create uh, a correlation matrix. So here, as you can see, the defaults give you effect size um, details and whether they are significant or not. If it's crossed out, then that means it's non-significant at uh, the given threshold. And it also, by default, adjusts the p-values for multiple comparisons. So for example, the default here is Holmes correction. Additionally, it's very careful uh, about handling uh, missing values. Um, so if you look at the sample sizes here in the legend, it will give you what was the minimum number of uh, sample size uh, for any of the tests, what was the mode, and what was the maximum number of uh, sample sizes here. Now here, there are only three correlations, so this is not that informative, but imagine if you have, let's say, 20 or 30 or more uh, correlations, then this can be quite helpful to figure out if you have any correlation pair, uh, which just does not have enough uh, data points to trust the results. Once again, you can always change the type of the test uh, from parametric to non-parametric to robust or to Bayesian, and all the statistical details will adjust accordingly. Um, additionally, if sometimes, of course, you also don't want to plot, you can also get a data frame out of this. Uh, you just have to specify output is equal to data frame, and it will return the data frame. Uh, if you want partial correlations, you can set partial equal to true and it will return partial correlations. Next up, uh, sometimes we have hypothesis uh, about composition of categorical variables. So this is for qualitative data. Um, and for this, the package provides ggpystats function to see association between categorical variables. So once again, you give it data uh, and you provide two uh, variables uh, whose associate categorical variables whose association we're interested in and will create a, a pie chart uh, for you. So the defaults here return a discrete statistics, differential statistics and effect size estimation in the in the in the for each facet. Um, and it also gives details from Bayesian hypothesis testing and estimation in the caption. Um, of course, sometimes uh, people don't want to use pie charts uh, because they can be a difficult visualization to decode for the user. So uh, package also provides an alternative in the form of bar charts. So the function call remains the same. Uh, instead of ggpystats, we use ggpastats and the, all the details remain the same. Uh, only you get a bar chart in return instead of a pie chart. Next up, uh, this is probably the most uh, general kind of hypothesis testing we can do, and that's the hypothesis about regression coefficients. Mm -hmm. And for that, the package provides ggcoefstats function. Um, so here you can define a model and just feed this model into the function and it will create a dot and whisker plot. And in this plot, um, by default, you'll get uh, the estimate and its uncertainty. You'll get the inferential statistics uh, in a label, and you can also get model fit indices, uh, which can be helpful if you have multiple uh, models that you want to compare. 
the list of supported models is quite large. Um, so pretty much most of the common regression models are supported by this function. Um, and this is thanks to the EasyStats uh, ecosystem of packages. If you haven't heard of it, uh, I would highly recommend that you check them out um, to see how you can work with, uh, work easily with regression models. Now, all of these primary functions come with grouped variants, and this makes it easy to run the same function for all levels of a single grouping variable. So for example, let's say I want to uh, run ggpy stats, but I want to do this for each level of a certain grouping variable, right? So here, for example, I'm interested in what's the distribution of the sil variable, but I want to do this separately for each level of a uh, am variable. So this is what it looks like. Um, so because am has two uh, levels, zero and one, the same function, uh, same function, ggpy stats, will be run for each level, and those plots will be combined and returned to you. And this kind of grouped uh, variant is available for all the other functions we have seen so far in the package. So this makes it really easy to repeat the same operation across uh, all levels of a single grouping variable. Um, so so far we have looked at what the defaults are for uh, for the plots returned by these functions. Uh, but what if you don't like this default plots? What options do you have in terms of changing the look and the aesthetics of the plot? Now, to change the aesthetics of the plot, you can change the themes and palettes for this package. Um, so for example, here I'm choosing a custom GG theme uh, from this HRBR themes package. So this is the custom, uh, not custom, this is another ggplot theme I'm using. And then I can also provide a different palette, uh, a color palette from a different package, right? Um, and the plot will, the look of the plot will change accordingly. You can also further modify ggplot, uh, ggstatsplot plots because these are basically ggplot objects. So you can use ggplot to functions um, to further modify this plot. So for example, here I want to add a secondary y-axis and I can just use it uh, for the plot which is returned by ggstatsplot and just add the ggplot2 function to it, just like you would make any other kind of ggplot2 plot. Um, and you can see that there's a secondary y-axis here now. Um, as you can see, uh, as you can imagine, sometimes you don't want to have uh, so many details with, uh, returned by the default. So you can sometimes you just for, uh, use these functions just to get the plot without any kind of statistical details. So for example, here I'm setting centrality plotting equal to false, results subtitle equal to false, BF message equal to false, pairwise compound false. So all this does is just returns the plot, right? It does not have any statistics anymore. So if you don't want to have any statistical details in the plot, that is also possible. Uh, but often you don't want um, either the plot um, or, the, or the other details which are in it. You just want the expression with the details uh, that, that includes all the statistical information. So in that case, what you can do is you can have the regular function call in ggstatsplot, but just add output is equal to subtitle. So instead of now getting a plot in the return, you will get a subtitle. So the basically the expression which you see here in return. And now you can use this expression in any plot that, that you have prepared, right? You can prepare a custom plot. You can prepare a plot with another uh, gg. Uh, ggplot to extension package, any other plot that you have, you can use the details which are included in this expression uh, in this custom plot. So you can also use uh, these expressions with your custom plots. Sometimes you also want to extract uh, data frames uh, from, this, from these plots. 
And for this, you can use another package called stats expression. So all the express, uh, all the statistical details that you see in Jesus stats plot are from stats expressions. And I would, I would encourage you to check out this package. I'm hearing echo from someone. Uh, yeah, thank you. Please, can you mute? Please. Yeah, yeah. Can you all mute? All right, all right. I'm going, sir. Yeah. Um, so now we can go back, uh, go back again to the question about why we should be using GGSAS plot or what are its benefits. Um, so first is that it supports different statistical approaches as as you must have observed, you can change the type uh, argument uh, or the parameter for all these functions from parametric to non-parametric or robust or Bayesian, and the statistical details will adjust accordingly. Um, so if you were to do this uh, without using ggstatsplot, the workflow would be quite complicated. So it would look something like this. So first of all, you'll need to have a lot of different packages to do this, uh, one for inferential statistics, another for computing effect size and uh, its uncertainty, another to compute the descript descriptives, um, another to extract the pairwise comparisons, another for hypothesis testing, another for estimation in Bayesian context. That's one thing. But the next thing, uh, which is even more complicated is all the inconsistencies that exist across these different packages, right? So whether these functions in these different packages accept data frames, vectors, matrices, is the data expected to be in long or wide format? Does it work with NAs? Does it return list data frames or arrays? Does it work uh, with tibbles? Does it have all the necessary details that you need, uh, etc.? So as you can see, you have to worry about none of this um, in, in the context of ggstats plot, because in the background, it takes care of all these inconsistencies for you, statistical details that you see in the plots. Additionally, talking between different statistical approaches is quite easy. So let's say you have a, a report or a publication where you have uh, used parametric statistics, but your boss or the reviewer wants you to change this to non-parametric. All you have to do is just replace type is equal to P uh, with type is equal to NP and voila, all, all of your statistics now adjust. Um, and now your new plots are going to have non-parametric uh, statistical details in them. Additionally, results uh, are in the context of the underlying data, right? So the standard approach of reporting uh, statistical uh, analysis will be something like this, while the ggstats plot approach is something like this, which is you have the results, the statistical uh, details uh, in the context of the underlying data, right? So without looking at the underlying data, it can be quite hard in the standard approach to, inter uh, to verify how reliable the, the, the details reported here are, right? And because ggstats plot um, provides the visualization with this uh, statistical detail uh, juxtaposed next to it, um, this becomes quite easy. So the, the ideal workflow to report would be to have um, the statistical details uh, in this visualization and then your text provides the interpretive context uh, for, for these details. Uh, also follows best practices in statistical reporting. The, the APA guidelines state what kind of details you should be reporting when you report uh, you know, statistics in publications. And it, it's ggstats plot, which relies on this stats expression package, which is another package I have created uh, for this, um, is designed to follow all these best practices. It avoids reporting errors. So for example, um, I don't know about other fields, but for example, in psychology, it was found that one in eight uh, published research papers 
first contain at least one grossly inconsistent p-value that might have affected the statistical conclusion. Um, but here in digital plot, since the plot and the statistical analysis are yoked together, the chances of making an error like this in reporting is quite minimized. Because typically these kinds of um, errors happen when, for example, you're trying to copy paste results from, uh, from R or from other GUI software to your uh, Word document. So you also don't need to worry about updating figures and statistical details separately because they are linked together. Additionally, um, a typical, typically it's it's difficult to make sense of null results. So if you're if you're carrying a statistical analysis and if your p-value is about uh, 0 0.05, in null hypothesis significant testing, um, we we can't say anything about whether the null hypothesis can be accepted. Of course, we can say that it can't be rejected, but can it be accepted? And in this, um, in this case, Bayesian hypothesis testing is more useful. Um, and because um, ggstats plot always provides you with details about base factors, um, you can also, if your null hypo uh, hypothesis significance testing tells you that it can't be rejected, we can then use the base factors or the Bayesian analysis to see if it actually can be accepted. So the package is also useful in this context. Um, there are a few other sundry benefits. Um, minimal code is needed. Uh, so there is a minim minimal chance of error and it makes for tidy scripts. Uh, disembodied figures can stand on their own and are easy to evaluate because uh, visualizations provide the, the context for your statistical analysis. So your, um, your stats and your figures can stand on their own and are easy to evaluate. There's more breathing room for theoretical discussion and other texts. So for example, if you're writing a report or if you're writing a publication, um, sometimes a lot of ink is spent on just writing down the statistical results, but because uh, in these stats plot, these results are contained in the plots themselves. You have more room left for other kinds of discussion in the in the publication or a report. Um, in summary, the ggstats plot approach is quite beneficial because it avoids errors in statistical reporting. It highlights the importance of the effect by providing effect size measures by default. It provides an easy way to evaluate absence of an effect using Bayesian framework. It demands to evaluate statistical analysis in the context of the underlying data and is easy and simple enough that somebody with little uh, to no coding experience can use it without making an error. Um, now that we have seen benefits of DigiStar support, I would also like to talk about some misconceptions and limitations. So here are some of the misconceptions that this package is an alternative to learning ggplot2. <clears throat> That's not true. The more you know ggplot2, the better you can modify the plots to your liking. So as we have seen, ggstatsplot returns ggplot to objects. And if you're not happy with the custom plots, uh, your best bet is going to be to modify them further using ggplot2 functions. So it, it's going to be quite handy for you to understand the ggplot2 framework if you want to change the default plots. Um, it's meant to be used in talks or presentations. That's not true. I mean, of course you can use them, but the defaults can be too complicated uh, for effectively communicating results in time-constrained presentation settings. For example, conference talks or something like that. So there you might benefit from having simpler visualizations that, that get your point across. Um, only relevant when used in publications, that not necessarily, it can also be useful only during the exploratory phase. So you don't need to use these plots in publications. This can just be for your own benefit uh, when you want to uh, explore the data quickly. It's the only game in town, not really. You have excellent GUI open source softwares like JASP and JAMOV, which uh, actually rely on R in the background which also give you uh, statistical details juxtaposed with, uh, with really informative visualizations. What are some of the limitations of ggstatsplot? 
Um, the first is that there are a limited number of plots and statistical tests available, and this will always be the case. It's, uh, it's too much of an ask uh, for a single package to support all kinds of plots or all kinds of uh, tests. Um, it expects a non-trivial level of statistical proficiency, uh, but you can also use these plots without including any statistics at all. So if you don't if you feel that you're not confident enough to interpret the, all the statistical details that it returns by default, you can just use this package to create um, uh, plots um, quickly. And another big uh, disadvantage is that it, the faceting doesn't work. Um, so if you know ggplot2, you know that you can use faceting functionality to create small multiples. Um, and this is this can be quite handy, uh, but since ggstatsplot ggstats doesn't come with like custom uh, geometries, this is not possible. And for the same reason, these plots are not also very ggi animate friendly. Overcoming these limitations, uh, contributions are welcome, big or small. Here are some ways that you, you can contribute. You can um, start on GitHub to increase its visibility. You can cite the package if used. Uh, in a publication, you can uh, proofread the documentation. Sometimes uh, the documentation lags behind the code development and you can help clarify that. You can raise issues about bugs and features. You can review code uh, for any problems. Or you also, you can add new functionality, but that requires a lot more effort. Um, yeah, whatever you're comfortable with, the, so the, these are some ways for you to contribute to this project. Acknowledgements, uh, I want to thank my other developer friends uh, who have helped me a lot um, during the development of this package. Uh, support from my advisors um, who have supported you know, the development of this package, the larger assets community uh, of users and developers. And uh, lastly, you can find me at, uh, you can find me on Twitter, you can find me on GitHub, you can check out my personal website, or you can write to me at this email address with, uh, with more questions. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. If you want to have any more information about this package, the website is uh, here. Uh, the website contains uh, detailed documentation for these functions. Yeah. Thank you. I'll, I'll have questions now. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Petit. Uh, for we would like to have your questions. Would like to have your questions. So please, we're in a Q and A section. Any questions? You can unmute now, please. Any questions? Any questions? Yeah, I think um, Olua Femi is raising up his hand. Thank you. Yeah, this. Hi, good morning. Right. Okay, thank you for give, uh, giving us a wonderful talk, uh, Dr. Indraji. But my, for my own end, I would like to ask, the, the GG Starts Plot Package, is there any linkage with the, the report package? Because I know it's still part of the Easy Start. So is there any relationship between the GG Start Plot and the report package? Um, so no, GG Starts Plot is actually not, not part of the Easy Stats. Uh, I mean, it relies on the Easy Stats ecosystem, but it's actually not part of the Easy Stats. So, what the functionality that you see in report um, is not going to be available in Easy Stats plot. Um, something similar to that might be supported in the future, but it's going to be quite different from uh, from report because report um, is designed to be much more general. Uh, right, like you can give it any kind of regression model, you can give it t-test, ANOVA, uh, et cetera, and it'll work. Uh, while ggstats plot has a much narrower scope because it supports uh, only a few kinds of tests. Um, yeah, so I think if you're using report uh, for creating um, text, 
uh, summaries of your statistical analysis, I would recommend that you continue using report. GGStats plot is always going to have a much narrower scope uh, than report. Um, I see uh, some uh, a couple of questions that I can uh, in the chat that I can answer. So one is that sometimes the statistical annotations on the plot are too tiny or illegible. How would you change them to a larger font sizes? Um, so the size here is basically, um, you know, this is just because of the slides in which you're seeing these plots. Um, the, the size is going to differ based on whether this is uh, R Studio pane or whether you save the plots. Um, so one way you can change them is of course using a different theme um, which has a larger uh, size. So for example, uh, you can set GG themes equal to GG plot to theme minimal and specify base size equal to 14 or something like that. So you can you can modify the, the, the size of the text as you see fit. Um, so that's easy to change. The other one is that seems most of the work is based on frequentist approach. However, I see there is possibility of inclusion of type is equal to base. Could you give a typical scenario where the two make big difference? and specifically more interested in the Bayesian approaches. Um, so like I mentioned, um, well, usually the default plots in GGStats plot will give you both details from both approaches. The frequentist details will be in the subtitle and the Bayesian details will be in the caption, um, right? And so it, it, it gives equal importance to both of those approaches and uh, the context in which uh, these two might make a difference is in the context of null results. As I mentioned, uh, in case of null results, when your p-value is above 0.05 or whatever threshold of significance is, the null hypothesis significance testing or the frequentist approach is mute in terms of uh, what, what we can say about whether the null hypothesis can be accepted. But the Bayesian uh, hypothesis testing can actually give uh, some information about whether the null hypothesis can be accepted. So in that context, these two approaches can be quite helpful. Um, okay, the next question is, can someone use the package for a data that follows a certain distribution, say exponential or uniform? Um, well, yes, you can use it to visualize uh, the, the, these distributions, for example, using function like GG histostats. Uh, but whether the results, the statistical analysis will be reliable um, is debatable. So the ggstats plot package just runs the analysis if you ask it to run the analysis. It's not going to check, uh, it's not going to check whether it's, uh, it's right to run these kinds of analysis, right? Um, and so the model assumptions checks should be run independently before you actually use ggstats plot. And if you want to do that, I will highly recommend that you check out performance package. That gives you a quite comprehensive suite to check you know, related model assumptions before you use uh, ggstats plot to visualize these kinds of models. Uh, would you kindly share the R scripts for this package, especially those your presentations uh, those presented in your presentation? Uh, sure, I can. I can share my slides with the organizers, and like all all the details related to the slides are available uh, openly on GitHub. So I can just give you a link um, to the to the GitHub repo where the slides. Um, are and just then you can just look at the script there. Yeah, I, I can do that. Okay. Um, what techniques have you found successful for getting contributions to your software? Um, well, typically people have, um, you know, raised um, issues with uh, bug, 
notices, right? Like if there is a bug in the software or something like that, that's quite helpful. And um, sometimes people also make feature requests, uh, which I find to be quite useful. So I think those are two ways most common um, in which um, people have, you know, contributed to this software development. Yeah. Um, more questions? More questions? Question, question. Um, in the absence of no questions, uh, I would like to move the mic uh, to I think there's a question uh, by Agumba who says, it seems most of the work is based on frequentized approach. Mm -hmm. However, I see there's no possibility of inclusion of type of type no, no. bias. Could you give a typical scenario where the two make to make big difference and specifically more interesting in the Bayesian approach? Yeah, I already answered both of his questions. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. All right. Thanks, Petit. Let me um, introduce. Let me. Bill Keys, are you on? Sure, I'm on. Please, I would like to move um, the mic to you so that you can say one or two things and give us both of thanks in the absence of no question. Okay. okay. So, um, good evening, everyone. Um, I really want to appreciate Indrajit. But here, um, I'm really honored to have you here. And um, I really love the way you attend to me. And um, this is the first time we're meeting live. So thank you so much. We appreciate your support for the R community. And um, this is our local community here. And I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. And also for your punctuality. We are really grateful for this. So we look forward to having you some other time on a different topic. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot for inviting. This was a lot of fun and I really appreciate the invitation. And yeah, I'll be happy to, you know, come back and talk about some other package. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. So um, I also like to appreciate everyone thank that you. has been here. Thank you so much. All throughout the program, I'm really grateful for your presence here. We we'll really appreciate your support. So I'll hand over to Abu Bakr to conclude the program that we can round up. Thank you. All right, thanks, Bill Keys. And I, I can see I want to appreciate some people that I was not expecting, but due to communication, and uh, I can see them here, especially Jamilu Yunusa Folgore from Abu Zari Amadbelo University. Uh, it's nice to have you here. And uh, I want to appreciate Dr. Indraja Patil. Thank you for doing this. Uh, your presentation is awesome. And we, you did justice to this topic. Thank you very much. In the absence of no any comment, sorry, I would like to thank no, everyone. Sorry, I want to add someone. Sorry. Yes. I noticed them um, for La Jimmy. Okay, please do. Aroyo Aroye is the coordinator and the founder of um, Lagos R user group as mm. well. So I can see him in the group here. So thank you so much for joining You're us. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. And uh, for for codes, and like I said earlier, we are excited to have you. And for codes, um, we'll be sharing it in our handles. Please do visit and keep in touch with us for next uh, for, for for March for March. Um, our webinar coming up March, and we communicate to you before time. And thank you very much, in Trader Party. We hope to see more of you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Have Thank a nice everyone. day. Bye. Have a nice weekend. Bye.